Have you ever felt overwhelmed? Like a challenge was too big and you were too small? You might be trying to overcome an addiction. Your family is horribly broken. You don't know what or how you'll ever fix it. You're facing an immigration challenge. You're trying to become a a citizen or get legal residency status, but you run into endless obstacles. Maybe you're holding a grudge over a deep hurt in your past. You've tried to forgive, and it's not working. You're facing a mountain of debt. Can't find a job. Your marriage is in trouble. You're trying to rebuild after a disaster. Have you ever faced a challenge that makes you think, I don't have a chance. I don't know enough. I can't do enough. I don't have enough. There is no way. If you have, or if you currently are facing that kind of challenge, I want you to listen close. The last three weeks, we've been learning giant fighting principles from the story of David and Goliath. Before David could become king and fulfill his God-anointed purpose, he first had a giant to face. What's your giant? What's that one thing that stands between you and your God-ordained potential? What's that? What's that one area that you've struggled with but you can't seem to overcome? What's your giant? A lot of you have shared your giants with me. Smoking, insecurity, fear, pornography, addiction, weight. You can be facing an external giant, a person or an outside force, or you're facing an internal giant, your own emotions, doubts, fears, and worries. I don't know what your giant is, but we all face them. We all face trials and battles and tests. That's a part of living on this earth. If you're here or you're watching online, I want you to know I have an agenda. I want you to tackle and overcome the biggest giant in your life. I know the excuses. I've been fighting this for years. I've tried everything. There's no way I can ever defeat this. Well, it's time to drop those excuses and take on the giant. The big issue that's keeping you from being and doing everything that God created you to be and do. I understand it can be discouraging when you've tried to defeat it and it's still in front of you. But looking at this story, I want to offer you hope and help. The confrontation with Goliath was the pivotal moment in David's life. David, just a young teenager, had been anointed by Samuel as the future king of Israel. But if if David faced Goliath and failed, he would most likely never realize that God appointed destiny. He wouldn't be known as the future king. He would be known as a past loser, defeated by the Philistines. Can you imagine the risk? David uh, put everything on the line in his fight with Goliath. His life was on the line. His reputation was on the line. The future of the nation was on the line. His future at king was at stake. I don't know what I would have done. I might have been tempted to let someone else fight. But David knew he was anointed to lead, and it was time to start. Leaders lead especially when no one else will. Leaders fight when everyone else is afraid. Leaders take on the enemy when everyone else runs away. Leaders sense and see the divine potential in confronting big, intimidating, long-term giants and problems. And leaders understand this simple principle. Between you and your potential, there's always a giant to face. This year on America's Got Talent, we watched an amazing example of someone who faced her giant. Her name is Mandy Harvey. Okay, Mandy, so I think I've worked this out. So you're deaf? Yes, I I lost all my hearing when I was 18 years old. Wow, and how old are you now? Uh, 29, so it's 10 years. Wow. And Mandy, how did you lose your hearing, if you don't mind me asking? I have a connective tissue disorder, so basically I got sick and my nerves deteriorated. 
Growing up, the only thing I wanted to do was sing. I ended up going to school for vocal music education so that I, I could have that be my life. When I was in college, I thought I had an ear infection and it just got worse and worse. And by Christmas, I was borderline legally deaf in both ears. There was one day where the teacher was going to play the piano and I had to chart out everything that he was playing. And I had my pencil ready and everybody else's pencils start moving and I'm just waiting for the test to start. And then one by one, every person just got up and left the room. And I just, I didn't hear enough to, to even start the test. That was the last day I was a part of music program. We were sitting in the car together to come home. She said, Dad, I can't remember what your voice sounds like anymore. At that moment, you knew that um, things would never be the same. Everything that I had ever wanted was just going away, and I couldn't stop it. I'm going to uh, sing a song that I wrote called Try. OK, can you tell me what it's about? After I lost my hearing, I gave up. But I want to do more with my life than just give up. So. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Good for you. Okay, well, look, this is your moment, and good luck. I don't feel the way I used to. The sky is gray, much more than it is blue. going to need a translator for this. America watched and was inspired and fell in love with Mandy because she refused to allow her obstacle to keep her from her dream. You have been created by God and crafted for a purpose. God has an amazing plan for your life. You're going to make a difference, not just for yourself, but far beyond yourself. My prayer is that you reach your God-given potential and purpose. It matters. Souls hang in the balance. Now, Satan doesn't know exactly what God has planned for your life, but he knows God has a plan for you. Satan's job is to discourage 
and distract you from that plan. He wants to destroy you before you ever fulfill God's purpose. And so giants are placed in your path. Giants of addiction, control, fear, doubt, worry, sickness, disease, financial bondage, worthlessness, discouragement, defeat, despair. When there's a giant in your path, it's easy to look at the huge obstacle and to give up. But you can't give up. In order to accomplish God's purpose, you have to face your giant. Let me set the story for you. Two armies, the Israelites and Philistines, were cap- camped on opposite sides of a valley. Every day a giant named Goliath came out and issued a challenge to the Israeli army. He challenged anyone to face him in a representative battle, a one-on-one fight. If Goliath won, the Israelite army would be defeated. If the Israelite won, the Philistine army would be defeated. For 40 days, Goliath issued his challenge. And for 40 days, the Israelites ran away in fear. David was sent to the front line to take food to his brothers. When he got there and saw what was happening, he was angry. He couldn't believe the army of God was intimidated by one man. And so David decided to do something about it and fight Goliath. David's brother, Eliab, ridiculed him. That didn't change David's mind. King Saul tried to talk him out of it. David still didn't change his mind. David said to Saul, God will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. And that let Saul off the hook. So Saul at the end of verse 37 said, go and the Lord go with you. Isn't it interesting how people use spiritual cliches to cover empty lives? They know all the right words and all the religious sounding sayings. Saul did. Saul, who had even considered asking for God for help, invoked God. He said, go and the Lord be with you. In other words, good luck, little man. Notice what he didn't say. He didn't say, go and I will go with you. He didn't say, go and I will carry your shield. In those days, kings weren't supposed to be far removed from the front lines. They were supposed to do battle. But Saul chose to stay on the sideline and watch. Saul decided Instead of facing his giant, he'd let someone else do it. Giants have to be defeated. Someone somehow eventually has to fight. Giants won't just go away on their own. Listen to me, parents. The giant you refuse to fight, your kids might have to fight. Leaders, the giant you allow to remain will, might be the reason that the next generation stumbles and falls. Your giant is your giant. No one else can fight it for you. And don't you dare try to assign it to someone else. Uh, People might say, you don't don't need to worry about that. That's not that big a deal. But to you, it's a giant. And no one else can battle it for you. Not a parent, not a pastor, not a counselor, not a friend. It's intimidating, but it's on the lonely battlefield facing a huge enemy that you learn a radical dependence and a radical trust in God. No one went with David. No one told David, I got your back. David was on his own. Well, not really. It was just him and God. And then Saul, who was bigger, taller, and stronger than David, and by the way, who wasn't willing to fight Goliath, Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David said, God will deliver me. Saul decided David needed more than God. So Saul brought in all his heavy armor and said, put this on, David. I'm not willing to fight, but here you go. You can use my armor. Saul was a big guy. David was a little guy. Saul dropped that oversized helmet onto David's head and wrapped his coat of mail around him. It was a comedy. David looked like a little boy trying on his dad's uniform. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I can't go in these, he said to Saul, because I'm not used to them. So he took them off. David dropped Saul's sword. He slid out of the armor. He said, King, 
I can't fight this stuff. I can't even walk in it. I sure haven't tested it in battle. I'm sorry, but this just isn't me. This isn't going to work. David had to go into the battle unprotected. That didn't change his mind. David was used to trusting in God, not in weapons and shields. That armor looked good. It looked like it would help, but all it did was weigh him down. This is so important when you're facing a giant. There may be some things that you need to put off. There may be relationships, habits, places you go, people you hang out with that weigh you down. You might have to change your cell phone number. You might have to get a new job. You might have to get away from some friends. Get rid of the excess baggage before you face your giant. Then David took his staff in his hand, chose Five smooth stones from the stream. Put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag and with a sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. David traded armor and a sword for a slingshot and five stones. Now in the natural, that doesn't sound like a very good deal. Why did David choose five stones? Well, I've heard it preached that David knew Goliath had four brothers, and that's why he took five stones. Give me a break. Come on. David had no way of knowing how many brothers Goliath had. He didn't get on the internet and go to genealogy.com and figure out his family. David didn't go across the enemy line and conduct interviews to find out about Goliath's brothers. Remember, David hadn't heard of Goliath till just a few moments ago. There's absolutely no indication in this passage that David was preparing for Goliath's brothers. So why did he take five instead of one? I think he took five stones because he was practical. He was going to be fully loaded. He was going to be ready in case he missed. See, to take just one stone, if David had just taken one, that would have been to put the trust in his own ability as a marksman with a slingshot. That wouldn't fit the picture of a humble shepherd. Remember, David wasn't supposed to get credit for the victory. God was supposed to get credit. So David didn't presume upon God. David was going to hurl as many stones he could as fast as he could. David didn't put his trust in his ability. He put his trust in his God who gave him that ability. David was practical. David trusted God, and David made good preparations. Because, come on, think about this. I got a question. If David knew God was going to deliver him, why even take a sling and stones? Why prepare it all? Why not just go out there and shout at Goliath, and he'd fall over? Why not blow on him or spit at him? David took stones. God doesn't expect you to be foolish. This flies in the face of everyone says, well, we don't need to make plans. We just need to trust God, brother. It's always followed with a brother. I don't know why that is. <laughs> I actually had someone tell me that. They came and said, you plan too much. We don't need all that planning. We just need God, brother. I ignored that critic. You really don't want that. You don't want me just walking out here and saying whatever comes to my mind. There's no telling what I'd, I'd say. If you were here last Sunday night, you saw what happens when I don't properly plan. Now, that was funny once, but you would not enjoy that every week, and I wouldn't either. I absolutely believe you should trust God. I also believe you shouldn't be foolish and unprepared. Still, all David had was a slingshot and five stones against a giant wearing 200 pounds of armor. David was not properly armed for battle, at least not in the eyes of the world. But no giant will ever be a match for a big God and a little rock. God is not limited by what you have. Listen to me, God is not limited by your resources. You don't understand, Rod, I have nothing. I can never get out of this financial hole. I can never overcome this struggle. It's too far gone. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough strength. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough help. I don't have enough knowledge. I don't have enough experience. Good. Because no matter how much you have, it's not going to be enough anyway. So it's time to change your thinking. 
Quit worrying about what you don't have. You serve the God who created the universe, and he is not limited by what you have. You're not fighting in your strength. You're fighting in his strength. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul wrote, We do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have what kind of power? Divine power. God's power to demolish strongholds. Do you get that? God's on your side with power to demolish strongholds and bring down giants. David got a slingshot. He stopped at the creek and he selected his ammunition. Five smooth stones. And then confident that God was on his side, David headed to the fight. Now David knew Goliath was stronger than him, but he also knew that with God on his side, the odds were in his favor. Meanwhile, verse 41, the Philistine with the shield bearer in front of him, and I need to stop and explain. That was a custom in ancient warfare. Goliath had a shield bearer walking in front of him, carrying a shield big enough to protect Goliath from neck to toe. Carrying the shield was a tough, thankless job. In fact, if you did your job right, you died. You took an arrow, an arrow for your boss, and that really doesn't, this doesn't seem fair at all. We look at this picture and we want to say, now hold on a second, that's two against one. And, and really it forces us some questions. Did Goliath really need a shield bearer against a little shepherd boy? Why did Goliath bring him? After all those threats and all those talks, why did Goliath bring a shield bearer? And where was David's shield bearer? Out of all those guys, why didn't someone walk the battle line with David? There were no volunteers. We look through national, naturalized and we want to recruit a shield bearer for David. But David saw it differently. Look what David wrote later about his shield and his shield bearer. Psalms 3.3, you are a shield around me, O Lord. You bestow glory on me and lift up my head. Psalm 5.12, for surely, O Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Psalm 710, my shield is God most high who saves the upright in heart. David learned a powerful lesson. He didn't have to recruit another man to go with him because David learned what you must learn. You plus God equals an overwhelming majority. You are not outnumbered and you are not outmanned. I don't know what you're facing, but I know this. With God on your side, you've got more than enough to win. He is your shield and your protector. Don't ever forget that. Matter of fact, when you leave today, the ushers have a gift for you, a magnet. It's just a shield with that one verse on it from Psalm 710. My shield is God most high. Put that somewhere where you'll see it often as a reminder that you're never alone. Your shield is God most high. And because God is on your side, you can defeat your giant. Now, if you don't have God on your side, you won't defeat your giant. Your giant will dominate you, rule you, and ultimately destroy you. What a picture. Goliath on one side. The giant with all the weapons. Goliath, the big guy. Goliath, the great warrior. Goliath with his intimidating challenges, and he's got a shield bearer in front of him. On the other side was David with a slingshot and some rocks. David was alone. Goliath had a buddy. And little did Goliath know, even his buddy wasn't going to be big enough against David and his great big God. Verse 41 is a bit of a surprise. Meanwhile, the Philistine, with his shield bearer in front of him, kept coming closer to David. You can almost see the scene. This huge man, covered with armor, led by a shield bearer, 
faced off the cross the valley with a little shabbily dressed shepherd with a few rocks and a slingshot. Can you imagine what the two armies were thinking while they watched this? The Philistine army had to think it was a joke. The Israelite army, I think they were packing their backpacks. They were getting ready to run. And the shepherd boy, David, saw Goliath coming across the valley. And David had to look up at Goliath and think, God, you got to help me now. This guy's bigger than I thought. If you were God right here, wouldn't you have done something different? Goliath should turn and run, imitated at the sight of the brave boy. The bully should run away. That's what your dad taught you, right? Bullies are all talk. They don't really want to fight. But this giant just kept coming. Here's the lesson. Just because you're thinking about or preparing to fight, don't expect the giant in your life to give you a break. Giants are giants because they are giant. They're not going to disappear on their own. Your giant will keep advancing until it's defeated. And the closer the giant gets, the bigger it looks. Just because you've trusted God and decided to fight your fight doesn't mean the giant will disappear. Get ready. Most likely, there's going to be a struggle. There's going to be a fight. Goliath looked David over and saw that he was only a boy, ruddy and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said. I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Goliath attempted to intimidate David with threats. I think Goliath expected David to turn and run. Maybe David wanted to. David had to work through all the motions. He couldn't let anything keep him from the fight. You can't either. And understand, before you fight the giant, you may face discouragement and fear. Just might be there. Because giants are frightening. I know it seems impossible. I know you're not sure you can do it. Face the discouragement. Face the fear and keep moving forward. Get ready to fight. Your giant will be defeated. Because of your strength? Of course not. If you could defeat the giant on your own, you already would have. It's not about you. It's about God. Here's the takeaway. What I want you to remember, with God's help, you can take on your giant. You are not alone. It doesn't matter how many people look like they're lined up against you because they may have an army on their side, but you've got God Almighty on your side. And you will take on and you will defeat your giant because God is with you. Would you bow your heads with me? I want to pray for you today. If you're facing a giant that seems bigger than you, and these, even as we've talked about it these last few weeks, you've just, you've just thought, oh, this is too big. I know what Pastor Rod's saying. This is too big. There's just no way. I just don't see how, how I can ever do this. Maybe, maybe even started, and then you just were ready to give up. This is so hard. If you're facing a big, intimidating, overwhelming giant, I want to pray for you. If that's you, if you say, Pastor Rod, this one's really big, and I am a little intimidated. I need God's help. Would you stand right where you're at, and we're going to pray. Do it quick. Say, what will people think about me? Who cares? If you're worried about what people think of you, then guess what? They're your giant. And we're going to pray with you. If there's somebody standing near you, would you stand with them? Even if they're not near you, you can walk over to them. We've got time. Put your hand on their shoulder or put your arm around them. We want to pray for you today. And we want you to know, no matter how intimidating the giant, your God is bigger than the giant. You're not alone because God's on your side. And you're not alone because we're on your side. We'll stand with you and we will fight with you. It's true. We can't fight your giant for you, but we can fight your giant with you. 
and we will. The people standing with you are going to pray. I'm going to pray as well. And we're going to believe God for his help as you take on your giant. Lord, we come to you today in Jesus' name. Facing some big, challenging, intimidating giants. Lord, I pray for people who as they look at the giant in their path and the obstacle that must be defeated, that they're more than a little frightened. Lord, maybe they've even taken those, those first few steps towards facing that giant, but it just keeps coming and it seems bigger and bigger and bigger. God, I pray right now that you would speak to their hearts and they would know that you are on their side. Lord, you are our shield. You surround us with your favor as a shield. We are shielded by you. We are shielded by the grace of God. You go with us and you fight for us. And you, we fight in your strength and in, in your might, not in our ability. So we come to you today and we confess our weakness. God, we don't know if we have what it takes to defeat this giant. We don't know if we're smart enough or good enough or ready enough. But God, I thank you that you are more than enough. And I pray, God, that through you, giants would fall and giants would be defeated. We make the decision today to leave behind the discouragement and the fear because Almighty God is on our side. So right now, Lord, I pray that for people who've just right on the edge of giving up, I don't know how we'll ever face it. Right now, God, would you give them a new courage? Would you give them a new strength? Would you give them a new determination to fight because you're with them, Lord? God, we thank you that we don't fight alone, but with you on our side, no matter how many are against us, we are an overwhelming majority. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen.